you. Get in here, get in here, get in here. We're going to have a conversation. It is not your job to make nobody like you, okay? That person who you just feel like, oh my God, I don't know why they tr- why they treat me like that. I got to try to make them like me. I got to prove that I'm likable. Mm-mm. The mean girls at your job or even in your family who you like, oh my God, how do I make them like me or convince them that I'm likable or whatever it be. It's not your job to do that. The 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 friend or friend of me who seems to always throw you shade and you go out of your way try to make them like you it's not your job to get them to like you they don't have to like you okay hey mickey they don't have to like you let's talk about this real fast okay because the reality is that a lot of y'all are such sweet kind people let me get on the ring light a lot of y'all are very sweet kind people and i get it because god knows i've lived it before you really want these people to like you you want to be liked some people not gonna like you no matter what and guess what you won't die you won't lose no sleep let me plug in my shit i got a bunch of okay you're not gonna lose no sleep you won't be fine you say you're trying to tell your daughter that, baby. It may take her time to learn it, but trust me, with enough pain, she'll figure it out. Trust me, she will. She will. Hopefully, it won't be too much pain. But my thing is this. The worst that will happen from somebody not liking you, reasonably speaking, is that they will be in pain and will lose sleep. They can even go tell everybody crazy stuff about you. Ooh, they did this, they did that, they did the other, blah, blah, blah. So... Seven billion people on the face of the earth. Why are you worried about what a bunch of what a, what some chicken head ass folks is talking about? Right? You said MJ got all the advice. I ain't got all the advice, but I got the advice of today. You see what I'm saying? Child, you cannot always protect your reputation. You can't always make people like you. It's just it's not gonna happen. So y'all get in here, get in here, get in here. You said that's called social anxiety. I wouldn't call it social anxiety. I think I would call it hmm. Because there are plenty of people with social anxiety who are not worried about people liking them. Although wanting to be liked can express itself through social anxiety, I think wanting to be liked all the time is often more connected to psychological trauma. Trauma, usually from childhood or somewhere else, where, um, yeah, you learned that it was safe, that life was more safe when you were liked. You had a parent who was difficult. You had a whatever. I don't know, but it's someplace from there. I think it has more to do with people pleasing. That I think it has to do with social anxiety. Because you have some people who, are, who have no social anxiety whatsoever. The most extroverted people out there. And a lot of them, a lot of them, really, you see this extroversion and confidence. But a lot of them are over-functioning as a way to get people to like them. Right? That's why they do the most. Hey, Jay Scott. That's why they do the most. You know? Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, we're going to have a talk about it. That's right, baby, on your magic. He's not busy. He just doesn't want to spend time with you. That's another thing right there, okay? Here's what I need y'all to do in 2024. Please stop putting extra energy into trying to um, be in contact with my baby. If he don't text you back, don't call you back, don't message you back and everything like that, stop reaching out to him. Same apply to women. Please stop doing that. Please stop. Please stop. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's been so busy. Shut the fuck up. You ain't been that goddamn busy. Barack got time for Michelle. Jay got time. Jay a whole ass billionaire. And got on the road and went and followed his wife around the whole globe for a world to it. And this and this and this and this dude you dealing with ain't got time to call you back or return your text messages? Come on. Mm-mm. 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 No, ma'am. No, sir. Uh-uh. Let me see what my questions are today. Um, I'd love to join for your blessed advice. Oh, darling, I don't do share screens very often. Maybe in the future. You know why I don't do share screens? Like having y'all come on here, there's no shape because I don't know you. Um, let me keep this up so I can see the next question. Oh, I'm going to read that one next. Um, I don't do it because y'all get on here and y'all don't know how to shut up. No shade to you, but they mess it up for y'all. Get on here and they just talk, 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 talk like this. They finally got the... 
they they sound and board and they just gonna talk 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 and talk and i'm a very nice person so i don't want to just hit that x button and just take you off so rather than being uncomfortable and seeing the numbers just drop because those numbers be dropping drastically it's like nobody giving a fuck because you're talking too much and then everybody be dropping off of here and it's kind of pointless so you know so the win had that that awkward moment of like you know you basically making the audience run and like me sitting there awkwardly nodding and smiling mm -hmm. um we just don't do that no more yeah but it's no shade to you it's no shade to you it's just my experience you said i should have a timer yeah but then you gotta enforce the time because every time you open your mouth they keep talking even more so yeah some people don't get social cues or nonverbal cues they just are kind of awkward and shit they just ignore that shit they just keep talking it's kind of like that person when you've been out with somebody and they just don't shut the fuck up you be like a whole group is talking but they always are talking they over talk everybody else they don't catch on to the fact that people are zoning the fuck out after a while. They just keep talking and talking and talking and talking. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are like that. And unfortunately, yeah, I don't fuck with that shit. So here's the next question. I just dumped a guy. I really liked him. Um, shit, I really dumped a guy I really liked because he said um, I should have open mind and make him fall for me so he could take me seriously. I'm sorry, what the fuck? Um, did I do the right thing? I'm sad. So you tell him. <laughs> He told you that you, you should make him fall for you. Hey, Sequoia. He, he should. <laughs> this big grown motherfucking big back, big foot man said that you should make him fall for you. I don't know what's happening in 2023 and I don't know what's going to happen in 2024. Okay. I'm a whole ass gay man. Okay whole ass gay man and even i don't understand that prissy shit that's some prissy shit okay you gotta make people fall i'm a man fall for me make me feel special make me feel special that's how i feel like when a man be doing that shit okay i can't get on my back for that i can't get on my back for that i can't get on my back for that i can't i can't i can't I can't. I won't. I never will. If I smell that 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 wounded femininity in a man, I run. Now, if I, as a whole ass gay man, don't want to tolerate that, hey, Miss Moody, thank you for my Christmas card. Miss Moody, always think about me. You know, when you are who I am, I'm gonna just say this real fast, baby. I can do everything for the world. And do you know that I, generally speaking, don't get anything at all for Christmas. Never do. Rarely do. Right. Um, but Miss Moody always think of me. I always get a call from Miss Moody and I appreciate it so much. But let me get back to this. This big background man, child, let me say this. If a man make you feel like, or, or has the nerve to say out of his prissy lips that you basically need to chase him, right? Girl, run from him. Okay, that's the kind of man who's going to create trauma. He may even cheat on you at some point in time. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You said, am I still in the essay? Let you host me, baby. I, I live in essay. Why would you host me in my own home? I live here, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You, Yeah, no, no, sir. No, sir. All right. Uh, let me see here. You said, how do we send you something? I'm buying everything you sell at this point. Thank you, baby. I appreciate it. You want to buy something for me? Go to my site, www.mjharrisskin.com and get my skincare system or www.mjharrisbook.com and get my book. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You said, apparently men are the prize these days. Uh, I don't know that men are... I think that everybody's the prize. I think if I choose you and you choose me... I'm your prize and you're my prize. I think there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when one person believes that they're more prize than the other. That was my issue. And I know y'all be like, oh my God, can we drop this subject? Shut the fuck up because no, I'm not going to drop this subject. Um, the subject of, um, what's her face? Um, um, shall we shit drop the subject? Simone. Simone. Yes. The Olympian. That was my big issue there because I'm sitting there and I'm like watching this big ass grown motherfucking man. Maybe if he was five foot two and bony, right? I wouldn't see it that way. But you big in stature, 
Okay, and you big in ego from how you talking about her. Right? Low-key shading her. Basically saying, yeah, that men are the prize or however you verbalize the shit. I said, this don't even make no sense. The aesthetics of it don't make no sense to me. Okay? That don't make sense to me. It don't make no sense to me. It didn't make no sense. Thank you for my Bassman Shields. Um, yeah, let me go to my next question because I can't. Oh, I had a question that came in early and I want y'all to comment on here because I just really... I like to give advice where I feel like I can best add value. But in this area, I felt like I couldn't add as much value as I would like to. So I want to ask y'all to help her out as well. Comment below in this video. This woman wrote it to me. I'm not going to give her name and I won't give too many specifics because I do think this is a very private matter that I don't want to do anything that could directly indicate who she is. But she wrote in to me and she said, basically, she's been with a man for some period of time. Um, she was in love with him. She got pregnant. He has now disappeared. She's asking, what should she do? What should she do? What do y'all think she should do and how she should handle it? Okay. I'm going to say this right now. Okay. Um, if he gone, he gone. He a lost cause, in my opinion. Okay. Um, my thing is focus on having the healthiest pregnancy that you can have. Focus on getting some therapy during this process because there's a lot to go through. You're a first time mom and the baby's father isn't around. So you're grieving a breakup, grieving rejection, grieving all this other stuff. Do what you got to do to make sure you are mentally healthy. That is your most important thing. Make sure you're mentally and physically healthy. And do what you got to do to get his information so that you can go after him with a vengeance for child support. Okay? I would document all attempts to get in contact with him. I would do everything, baby. And I would go after him with a vengeance to get that good child support. Okay? Um, another thing that I would say keep in mind is he's making the choice not to be in your life. He's also making the choice... Hey, Muse Black, he's also making the choice not to be in your child's life. And that's just that. That's just that. Okay? I don't believe that you should penalize a man for how he treats you, but if he's not answering your calls, then how he going to be in the child's life? Now, if he changes tune later on, and that is what it is, but mm-mm, mm-mm, no ma'am, mm-mm. Um, so, let me see here. Um, well, I completely understand. Question. Emotional unavailability. Can we talk about it? Yeah, sure. The most, the most emotional unavailability. Oh, this is the person who asked me on live early. Emotional unavailability. I think that oftentimes when we find ourselves attracted to emotionally unavailable people is because we too are emotionally unavailable. Wow. Y'all didn't catch that, right? When you find yourself consistently attracted to emotionally unavailable people is because of the fact that you usually have emotional unavailability happening within you. And therefore, you choose emotional unavailable, unavailable people because by choosing the emotionally unavailable people, they do not push you to have to be available. You always have an out. People say, I don't know why you're attracting emotionally unavailable men. Well, because you are emotionally unavailable. No, I'm not. I know how to love. I love to love. I love to love. Right? Okay, you might, but emotionally available people don't tend to be attracted to emotionally unavailable people, right? So what is it about commitment that may scare you? Why is it that you're turned on and attracted to the strong silent type code for emotionally unavailable rather than being attracted to the guy or the girl who is emotionally available? You say, oh, they're too thirsty. They do too much. Oh my God, they're texting me again. No, it's called emotional availability. Yeah, they show you when they like you. Yeah, they're consistent. Yeah, they may say sweet things to you via text message at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday. They're not being weird. They're just being emotionally available and you're not used to that shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check in with yourself about why is it that you somehow or another struggle with being attracted to emotionally available people. Yeah, let's talk about that. I'm sending this message to someone who I meant to reach out to. Hey, hey, I just sent the message. Um, yeah. Mm hmm You see, at this point in my life, I need emotional availability. Strong silence, I get the fuck out of my face. Hey, Musa. Strong silence, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. I like, tell me your feelings, okay? Tell me your feelings. I don't need no wounded energy, you know, over hypersensitive, because that wears me out. But, um, yeah, I don't do strong and silent type. If I'm out and about, I was out and about the other day at this little, you know, situation. I'm standing there. Dude is staring at me, just staring at me, staring at me. Every time I look up, he's staring at me, he got his little drink. Every time I look up, he's staring at me, got his drink, and he look away. 
Okay, I get it. You doing you. Cool, whatever. So he keeps staring at me. So I'm like, well, he's not coming over to me. He's acting like, you know, whatever. Um, so whatever, I'll make my way near him. Because I believe that sometimes you have to give men, you have to activate them. You may, like, you may be thinking, oh my God, I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. He must know I like him. Some guys don't get it. Some guys have a very strong fear of rejection, believe it or not. Some, some of the most confident looking guys have a very strong fear of rejection. So one of the things that I've learned is don't do the work, but definitely put yourself beside him to let him know that you are giving him an invitation for him to do the work. So I kind of just found my way near him. I'm just drinking my little drink by him. And he sees me standing there and he's like, oh, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm good. How are you? Start talking. Baby, baby, baby. When I say that conversation was like pulling teeth, okay? Oh, my God. He was clearly interested in the conversation, but he was too focused on this whole let me be the strong, chill type. One word answer. Yeah, yeah, nah, cool. Mm -hmm. He could not carry a conversation. If I didn't ask a question, it didn't go on. And then so when I would just stop talking, that's what I do. I'm just going to stop talking. I'm not going to keep going with that shit. Okay. Okay. I'm not keep going with that shit. I'm not arrogant. I'm not conceited. But baby, I know what the fuck I bring. And so I was like, okay. So I changed subjects. I started talking to somebody else beside me. And he's like, uh, uh, so what you drinking? Just trying to find a way to make conversations. So I'm, like, I'm getting it. He's trying in his own little way. But I just felt like the level of effort he was putting in was so low that it was like he wanted me to do the work. I don't do that shit. I don't do that shit. That, 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 that triggered me. I don't know why it triggered me like that. Because I, I feel like it's a waste of my time. I don't want to do the work like that. Eat, match my energy. Match my energy or give me no energy. You see where I'm going with that? You see where I'm going with that? So with that said, I just kind of wasn't interested. He asked my phone number. I was like, oh, let's exchange um, Instagrams and I'll send you my phone number. I'll DM you my phone number later. He's like, okay, cool. He's like, but you don't want to just put it in there. You can call me on it now. I was like, no, because this is like, this is my other phone. And I have my other phone back at home. The one that I really use. So this one, though, this is just literally, it's just for Instagram. I lied. The shit we say just to get out of giving a man our phone number. But yeah, because I'm not going to be WID'd to death for the next three weeks. Good morning, WID. Girl, girl, we grown. We grown. I feel like you're 25 plus, no more WIDs. Okay? How's your day going? What am I doing shaving my, my beards? What am I using to shave my beard? I don't use anything to shave my beard, baby. I'm lasered. I got laser done. I'm like laser. So here's the thing. Laser from here down okay here down you figure it out okay so that's why my skin is so smooth because i don't really i basically have killed all my hair follicles from here down i don't i don't do my mustache and not really here here but here down and prp from here up okay am i gay avalyn asked am i gay i'm glad you asked that no i'm not gay that's a rumor it's a lie. Hey, Sierra, that's a lie. I'm not gay. I know that those videos came out with me with that man that time. And I know that I had that whole, you know, gay relationship thing, but that wasn't real. That was, I was, I'm, I'm not gay. No, no. And I walk like that because like one leg is slightly shorter than the other. So that's why it looks like I'm switching, but I'm really not gay. No. And I know that my face like looks like this kind of pretty and stuff and everything. But like th that's actually a deformity. Yeah. I'm not gay. No. The platforms that I was wearing, like the platform shoes that I was wearing. No, it's because I want to balance it out so that I don't switch when I walk. It's not gay. I love girls. Oh my God. Females are everything to me. Can't you picture me with a female? You got the point, honey? I'm gay as Christmas, honey. All right? Queen of the gays. Love men. Okay? Love them. All right? With all they fuck shit, I still love men. Mm-mm-mm. That's why I say women, women, we hopeless. Okay? Because these men be doing the dumbest shit. We still love them. We still love them, don't we? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know why we do. You know why we do. 
Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, all right. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. What's my next question? I just came out of a dark, depressed season where I was pretty much ghosted, where I pretty much ghosted most people who I love. Now that the sun is shining in my life again, I feel really bad. How do I reintroduce myself to my family and my extended friends? Um, thanks in advance. Okay, so what happened was this. You went through depression and you do what a lot of people do during depression. They separate themselves from people. Okay, so here's the thing. Transparency is always going to be transformational. I think you go to those people and you just be... Oh, you still out? Sarah, Sarah, I was there earlier. I'm sorry, I got to tell Sarah this. I was there earlier. I had an amazing time, but my social battery runs very low after a while. So I had to leave. I came home and took a nap, but it was amazing. But no, if you're depressed and like you're like... um. You backed off some people. I think you need to be transparent, right? Tell them. You, hey, just want to reconnect with you. And I would make it very clear and concise. You know, I just want to reconnect with you. Um, I have to tell you, you know, during that period of time, I was extremely depressed. Um, at the time, I don't know that I knew I was depressed, but looking back, I was. Um, that's what made me separate from so many people. Um, I, although I know it may have felt personal, I didn't. It wasn't intended to be personal. And in fact, I did it to multiple people. And you and several other people who I really love and respect, I'm reaching out to right now. Just to let you know that I'm really sorry and that I'm in a much better place. And if you're open to it, I would love to reconnect. How's lunch on Tuesday? If they can't understand and empathize with that, then baby, you were probably better off disconnecting with them. Spirit led you to disconnect with them, right? You see what I'm saying? You said you're a psych nurse going slightly mad with a breakup right now and my videos have helped you. Oh, I'm glad they helped you, baby. <clears throat> you know, that's what you gotta do. You gotta be honest about it. You know, I'll tell people in a minute, I'm so sorry I didn't get back to you. I was just exhausted with life for a little while, but how you feeling? What do you do with, what do you, what do you laser with? A laser, baby. You know how laser treatment works? They take that, um, what are you talking, you know what I'm talking about when you get, um, the, um, what's the thing called when you like have a baby and they look through the machine to see the baby in your stomach? What's the name of that machine? That process. And they put the ultrasound. So they put the ultras, it looks like ultrasound gel. It's really like a cooling gel, but it looks like ultrasound gel. They put it on your face as like a barrier between the laser and your skin. And they take the laser and it's like, it looks like a flashlight kind of. Um, and they go down your skin and what it does is it targets your hair follicles. And so when you have hair follicles, I don't know if it's making them explode or what it's doing, but it hurts. And it, so the more hair follicles you have, so like the first um, sonogram, okay, that too. Um, the first one is going to be painful, but after that, your skin comes very, very smooth and everything like that. Um, but yeah, that and PRP have been amazing for me. I get PRP here, here, um, my forehead. I'm getting it here because I feel like I'm getting lines here. I'm not ready for Botox yet. Nothing against it, but I'm just not ready for it. Because they say it works too good and you're not going to want to stop. So I'm like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do it yet. I'll wait. So anyway, I do PRP and it's really been good for me, you know. PRP is just like another thing. It kind of just stimulates growth in your face. Um, relatively natural. Um, you know, because of the fact that you're not really putting anything in it that's foreign from your body. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've had laser everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. All right. Let me see here. Um, okay. Okay. Um, what's PRP? I don't know. Platelet-rich plasma. So picture this. They draw the blood from your skin. I mean, from, from out of your arm or wherever they draw it from. Then they take the blood and they put it in the centrifuge, spin it. And after they spin it, the... You know how when you spin blood, the clear part goes to the top and like the, little, the red part goes to the bottom? The clear part, they then take out and then they re-inject it into your face. Like with this, like these needles. Going, it's like a bunch of needles. Not like deep, you know... It's not like they're drawing blood, but it's like deep. It goes into your skin right here, not too deep. And then what it does is your face will get red. It will. Um, probably a day or whatever. And then what happens is when it heals, your skin is just much more youthful. It stimulates whatever process, I don't know. And then um, coagulation, is that what it does? Um, if you do it in your hair, it helps your hair to come back. Because, you know, I'm balding right here. 
And so it's been helping my hair to come back. Look how that's coming back right there. And then also, I have to do it over my whole head to also stop the hair process. Um, what do you call it? The, um, the hair loss process. I don't want to lose hair. So anyway, I do that. Um, but the woman told me, she says, and I'm not a medical provider, so please do what you do with your doctor. But what she told me was, she says, do the PRP and also use minoxidil. Remember Rogaine with minoxidil? Minoxidil is an active ingredient for, for help hair, maintaining hair and getting hair back. So I do the PRP and then treat myself with minoxidil. It's like a little spray. It was like, just let your soul glow. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You just spray it on it. It's cool or whatever. I tell people what the fuck I do. I don't care. I will tell you in a hot minute what I do. It ain't that deep, you know, because I just feel like at the end of the day, we all want to look our best. You know, some people may want to do treatments that are a bit more uh, invasive than others. I'm a low invasive kind of girl. You know what I mean? A little laser, a little needle. That's not for me, you know, but I mean, you do what you better do. You do what you got to do, shit. All right. Uh, that's what I'm saying. But what's my next question? Um... How do you deal with a partner that shuts off and cuts off when stressed? It hurts. Whew, that's tough. You got an anxious attachment style and they have an avoidant attachment style. How do I know you have an ancient attachment style? Because of how you're affected um, by it when they do that. So first of all, shutting down like that and shutting you out is a form, can be considered as a form of stonewalling, which some people may view as a form of abuse. But here's what I want you to do is have some level of compassion towards them. Because people who do that, yes, you do have some narcissistic types who will do that uh, for sadistic reasons, solely for the purpose of hurting you. Um, because they perceive that you hurt them with whatever you said or did. So now they're going to hurt you with silence. Um, and that's a whole different story, okay? I'm talking about the, we need to have a bit of grace for people who frankly don't know any better. And they frankly just lack the tools to know how to show up in communication. That doesn't mean that it's okay what they're doing. But we have to understand that they're not shutting down um, be, for the purpose of hurting you or stressing you. They're shutting down because they don't have the tools to operate any differently. So if you are operating with a partner who is like that, this is where you're going to have to show up and do a little bit more work um, in the relationship. Even with a good, good relationship, you do have to do some work in it. And some of the work you may have to do within this instance is you may actually have to kind of take the lead with ushering in spaces and creating spaces where your partner will feel comfortable opening up and less inclined to shut down. I notice I said you less inclined to shut down because you have no control over if they will shut down, but you can create an environment that will make them less inclined to shut down. So one of the things I'm going to invite you to do is after, um, maybe not when you're in conflict, but you know, maybe a couple days after the first step is this, because this is an iterative process. It's going to take some time for you to get to this, but the first step in the process is to talk to them after conflict again not immediately after this needs to be when the conflict has at least somehow another calmed okay so you're going to go to that person and you're going to say to them hey, <coughs> excuse me hey um first of all i love you always start with love always start with love always start with love i love you and i know that you love me and i know that sometimes when we're in conflict it is so hard for us to fully express that love. And sometimes it's hard for us to receive that love. But I want to let you know that I love you. I do. And because I love you, I want you to feel as comfortable as possible being able to open up to me. But I also recognize that there may be some things that I do without even knowing it that may inspire you to shut down, or at the very least may not make you feel quite as comfortable with opening up. So I wanted to just ask you, and you don't have to have an answer right now. Take some time to think about it if you'd like to. I just wanted to know, what are maybe one or two things that I do that may trigger you to shut down, or just don't make you feel comfortable opening up around me? And I wanna let you know this. I know that in the past, Perhaps when you tried to tell me things about how you received me, maybe I didn't receive that so well. But I want to let you know that I really am making an effort now because I want us to be able to have healthy communication. And I know that I'm going to have to play a part in that as well. So take some time to think about it if you don't already have an answer. And I just want to hear what that is. And I promise you that when you tell me this, I'm not going to um, be defensive I'm not going to blame you. 
I'm just actually going to sit and I'm going to be silent and I'm going to listen. Does that work for you? And then let them come to you. You have to invite them to tell you what they believe happens from their perspective from you that makes them shut down. Now, here's the thing. That doesn't mean it's really your fault. That doesn't mean it's really your fault. <laughs> that doesn't mean... Because the reality is they've been shutting down before they ever met you. You're just the latest trigger. So understand, I'm not telling you to take responsibility for this person's emotional maturity, their emotional availability, their communication skills. No, what I'm saying is sometimes we have to negotiate and navigate the process by putting our cards on the table first. Right? And that's sometimes what you got to do. Especially if you're dealing with someone who doesn't have a lot of emotional tools. Right? They just not, they may not be where you are. They may not have the same level of emotional communicative maturity that you have. You got to take the first step sometimes. You do. So after that, and they tell you it, whatever it is, right? What you then have to, let me plug in my phone. What you then have to do is you all gonna have to come to some form of agreement. So now they share with you, well, you know, I, I like, I want to talk to you and open up to you, but sometimes, you know, you know, when you um, when you yell, it makes me shut down. Or sometimes when you, you know, talk, you know, I don't really feel like you give me time to interject. And you know, and so you just be talking, 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 and I get and I lose, I get intimidated, I lose track of what I'm trying to say, or you know, whatever it may be, they may tell you it. It's going to step on your toes because they're going to tell you stuff that's probably pretty accurate. Even though it may not be your intention, it's accurate probably. And you're going to have to deal with that. But when they tell you what you're going to do is you're then going to apologize. Not because you're wrong. You're apologizing for the impact, not for the intention. Let's repeat. You're apologizing for the impact, not the intention. The impact you had on this person was negative. Your intention was not. So you'll apologize for that. Don't say, I apologize for the impact, not the intention. Don't say that because that just takes the life out of the apology. That's almost like saying, I'm sorry for how you feel. That is the most fucked up ass way to apologize to anybody. Don't do that shit. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all you got to say. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mm. I'm sorry, and I'm committed to doing better. I am so sorry. And I promise you that even though I'm not perfect, I will make the most perfect attempt possible every single day to do my best in this area. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you for being honest with me enough to tell me what you feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Then, not right there, not right there, not right there, unless they ask you. You're going to, at a later time, sit down with them and talk with them about what your needs are, but not right there. One of the most emotionally sabotaging experiences is when somebody tells you what they're experiencing from you. Rather, you solicit the information or they initiate the conversation. And you're like, well, now let me tell you what I experienced from you. As if it's somehow another the emotional Olympics here. Let's compete. That sucks the life out of it. This person just was vulnerable with you. They're very raw right now. And now you're going to pour into them how you experienced them. Yes, your feelings are valid too. But they're not going to be valid two days from now. Wait. Girl, just let it sink in for a minute. Just let it sink in for a minute. Be in the glow of vulnerability. Vulnerability feels good after it happens. Be in the glow of that. Before you go into, well, now can I share with you how I experience you? The fuck? The fuck? All that goodwill you done did, listening to them, apologizing, you going to take all that shit away. Because now this person is very vulnerable and very raw. And then by you saying what you experienced from them, you could indirectly or unintentionally end up saying something to them that makes them feel like, oh, you just saying that to me because I said this to you. Right? They're raw. They're open. They're vulnerable right now. Come on now. So unless they ask you, they say, well, hold on. Is there anything I can do? If they ask you, 
Then here's what I'm going to invite you to do. Here's what I'm going to invite you to do. I'm going to invite you. They say, was well, there anything I can do? I would invite you to say, you know what? When I came into this conversation, I was really focused on you and making sure that I could be there for you. So I appreciate that you've asked me, is there anything that you can do for me? I'm going to be thoughtful about that. And maybe we can come back together tomorrow and talk about it. Because I just want to be thoughtful about it. And also, I just love being in the space that we're in right now of just really allowing you to be center stage and allowing your feelings to be center stage. Is that all right with you? So we'll talk about it tomorrow. I, I want to think about it. I want to think about it. Because I really want to make sure that I process everything you've shared with me. Because it's not just about hearing, it's about implementing and I want to make sure that I don't have anything that clouds what I'm hearing from you. Okay? Okay? That's how you handle this shit. Emotional intelligence don't require a whole lot of intelligence. It's just some basic ass thoughts. Okay? That is so critically important. That when someone is vulnerable with you about what they feel about you, that you don't then turn to defense and turn it. Well, let me tell you what you did. Let me tell you how I feel. And let me tell you that. Blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. Just learn to shut the fuck up. You ruin your relationships. And let me tell you what else you do. Let me tell you what else you do. When you do that kind of bullshit, what you do is you inspire that person to never come to you again with their feelings. That's why you're wondering why, damn, this person seems to have resentment towards me. They don't like me. They don't talk to me about this, blah, blah, blah. We used to be close or whatever it may be. It seems like my spouse, blah, 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 blah. They don't, they're not that close to me. It seems like they're holding back on me. They are. And if you want to know why, look back on what happened the last time they opened up to you. Look back on what happened the last five times they opened up to you. Was it an argument? Was it defensiveness? Did you turn it into a victim narrative where you told they told you what they felt and then you somehow another made yourself into the victim into the story in the story? Oh, but that was five years ago. They should be over that by now. No, no, they shouldn't. Because you didn't apologize. You didn't do the work to fix it. You basically showed your ass when they tried to show you vulnerability, even if they didn't show the vulnerability in the best way possible. Maybe they didn't know how to do it the best way possible, but they tried, right? You showed your ass. You weren't vulnerable. And then you thought just because they stopped bringing up the topic and things seemed to be okay that that left their mind. Nah, it didn't leave their minds. They, they wrote that. They put that away in the little manual. This is my book. They wrote in a little manual on you. They said, okay, person cannot take responsibility. Person attacks when confronted person is defensive person plays victim don't go to them again about shit well if you love me you should give if, if they love me they give me a second chance people ain't perfect they should give me another chance to prove that i know how to deal with things now why why should they do that why you've heard them repeatedly it was traumatizing for them do you understand how traumatizing it is when someone tries to open up to you about their feelings and you're defensive, you play victim, you turn it around on them to make, to make them out to be the bad guy? Or at the very least, just to make yourself the victim? You know what I'm saying? That's how traumatized that is? And how that can literally change the trajectory, the trajectory I'm sorry, of your relationship with the person? That's why, I'm th why it is so critically important. Why, why It's so critically important that if someone comes to you, or it opens up to you about their feelings towards you, if you invite it or if they just did it unsolicited, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do have a book. www.mjharrisbook.com. Get it now. You can also order a signed copy too. Hold on, I'm writing. I'm writing in here. It's so quickly important that if someone opens up to you, solicited or unsolicited about their feelings about you, that to the best of your ability, to the best of your ability, that you meet it. Without any defensiveness, denial, victim mentality, anything like that. Do not turn around them. Well, let me tell you what you do. You know what the worst thing yet? They say, I feel this way about you. I feel the same way about you. Okay. Well, you can feel that way too, but that doesn't invalidate what the person just said they feel about you. Okay. So y'all feel the same thing. Can they th get their fucking thought out and tell you what they had the courage to bring up? Because that's one of the worst fucking things to me on earth is when somebody has the courage to bring up information. We've been in issues, right? You have the courage to bring up information to somebody, 
to say, hey, I want to share with you what I'm feeling. And they meet you with some bullshit and try to turn around and you be like, hold on. If you really felt this way, why did you have to wait until I start to initiate the conversation for you to tell me this shit? That shit ain't valid. You just being defensive, right? You see where I'm going with that? So nonetheless, if you're dealing with someone who's emotionally unavailable, who shuts down, offer them the opportunity to open up and be very conscious that they are very raw and they're usually very afraid of being hurt. So when they are opening up to you, even when you're hearing things you don't want to hear, you have to do your best to not meet them with negativity, defensiveness, victim mindset, anything like that. Because if you do that, you can make them shut down and they will shut down even harder than what they were shutting down before. You see what I'm saying? So this is going to require some work on... This is going to require some work on your part. This is going to require some work on your part as well. That doesn't mean you're wrong, but it does mean that you're going to have to participate. Uh, let me see here. Um... I just met a guy, he likes calling, but I don't know how to talk. I don't know what to talk about. I've been off the dating scene and I'm trying to figure out what to talk about besides just asking a bunch of questions. There's this um, thing you can Google, 36 questions that lead to love. 36 questions that lead to love. I'm going to say it again, 36 questions that lead to love. Um, I think it was a New York Times article or something like that. It's 36 questions that um, are so fun to ask. You don't want to ask them all in one city because it's a lot of questions, but they're really great conversation starters. And so how I would say is I'm not going to say, do you want to answer 36 questions that lead to love? And I'll be like, hey, um, I found this article and it was like some really interesting questions that they were suggesting that you should ask each other if you want to get to know each other. You want to go and do a couple of them with each other? And you ask the question. And then he answers, and then he asks you the same question, and you answer. And these questions will help you to learn a lot about each other, but they're amazing conversation starters. You may get to question number seven, I'm making up a number, and like, and end up going off into a full tangent that leads to a three-hour conversation about something. It's a great way to start getting to know each other, and as you start to get to know each other, you will start to have conversations. But here's the thing I want y'all to understand, okay? Am I in a storm? No, I'm, I'm in Cape Town. It's really windy, and I've got one of the windows open right now. So you're just hearing the wind going through here like a cyclone. Um, but one of the things you have to recognize, hey, Diane, is that when it comes to dating and everything like that, it's supposed to be awkward in the beginning. Just a little bit. You don't know each other. You're learning each other. You don't want to say the wrong thing. That's normal. So don't run from the awkwardness. Don't run from the discomfort. Don't run from it. That's normal. You know? It's okay. You know, also one of the things I would recommend is perhaps consider um, leaving the phone for a little while and meeting in person. Oh, you want to see my tattoo? Right here. It says, put your, it's, I can't show you it straight because it's actually intended for my side for me to see it, but it says, put yourself first. That's how it, that's what it says. Um, But I think sometimes hanging out in person is a good idea, an activity, bowling or something like that. Because sometimes some people just don't do well on the phone. But when they see you in person, when they can see you, smell you, touch you, that's when sometimes, you know, a little bit better conversation comes out of it. And then that can in- improve the phone conversations. But if phone is all you have access to at this point in time, uh, I would try to um, I would try to conversation around uh, using those questions. You say, why do they ask for money? Oh, a man asking for money? Never. Oh, no. Hell no. I don't believe in women asking people for money, much less a man. Uh-uh. That's a no. That's a chop. Mm-mm. Hell no. MJ, I'm so inspired by your mastery in relations, in healthy relationships. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I would love to get your personal perspective on how long is too long to be engaged and how could I acquire a faster process without the pressure? Well, I don't know how long you've been engaged, okay? But, um... Some people have economic reasons why they want to be engaged a bit longer because they feel like, oh, I don't want to get married right now because we can't afford the wedding, so on and so forth. Um, I think a conversation to have with your spouse, uh, being transparent without, like you said, adding pressure is just to be honest and just be able to say, baby, I love you so much. And one of the greatest dreams of my life is knowing that I will be your wife one day 
and the anticipation. It is so beautiful, but it's so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Baby, I just want to be your wife. And um, I would like that to be soon. I would. So I just want to talk to you because I don't want you to feel pressure. But I do want you to know how I feel. So that we can come together and figure out when, it, when can we make that happen? Because baby, that's the greatest dream of my life. Say that. Say that. Just like that. You're welcome. That's what you do. You pull your femininity out, honey. You pull your femininity out. Pull it out. Soften. Don't demand. You see what I'm saying? You see I'm going? That's how you got to handle it. Men love that shit. They love that shit. Gay, straight, it don't matter. They love that shit. They love you to talk to them in a certain kind of way. You see, they want you to talk to them in a certain kind of way. You see what I'm saying? So talk to your man in a certain kind of way. He wants inspire his emotions. Don't pressure his mind. Inspire his emotions. You see where I'm going with that? That's how you do it. Exactly. Soften. Don't demand, Musa. Exactly. Soften. Don't demand. Absolutely. That's how I've always believed that. I've, it works. Men love a soft touch. Women love a soft touch, too. Let's be real. Your man gets much further with you with a soft touch than a heavy hand. You know? And so, yeah, soften. You know? You said even, even your cursing is classy. Thank you. <laughs> you say, hold on, what she say here? Clearly Cole said, she says, I nearly offered to marry you after that. Oh, honey, I'm a size eight and a half on the ring. <laughs> no, but no, for real. I'm telling you this. I learned this as a teenager and it has carried me through. Okay. With men, right? And I'm sure we know women too, but I'm going to speak heavily about ma masculine energy people. So rather it's a masculine energy woman, masculine energy man, it doesn't matter. Masculine energy people, right? We know we're talking about energy, not expression. Somebody could be snapping their fingers with fingernails and still be masculine energy, all right? Masculine energy people, period, prefer a softer touch. They will do anything for you, reasonably speaking, if you approach them with a softer touch. You know, be kind, be sweet, inspire them. They will go out of the way to give you everything you want and more. So try that. Okay? Let's see here. Um, what's my next question? She says, hey, he messages me during the day all normal. I don't know what SP means. It's not a booty call, but when it comes to meeting, he's long gone and the messages all normal a week later. Oh, baby. I'm, okay, so he messages you. He's really good about messaging, but when it comes time to meet up, he goes, goes. He's wasting your time. He's more than likely in a relationship with somebody else or heavily courting someone else. He's keeping you on standby, but he is not fully available emotionally or physically. All right. He is wasting your time. If he can't meet up with you and he ghosts you and does all this stuff, I don't care what he's I'm so sorry. My phone got broken. The battery went out. Shut the fuck up. Okay. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Now I always act like I don't know. Oh, that's fine. No worries. That's the dumbest shit. Men don't understand we put them on a list of dumbass at that point in time, right? Be done with them. Oh, I'm so sorry my car broke down. On the day you're supposed to meet up with me, for real? For real? Okay, cool. Cool, okay? So here's what you got to do, baby. Don't tell him what you're doing. Just stop fucking dealing with him. He's ghosted you already. Stop dealing with him. Put his contact on mute. Stop communicating with him. Because here's the thing, you say, well, what if there's something legitimate going on? He would have told you that. He would have told you that. And you said it happens every time. Every time, which would lead me to believe this happened more than once. Really? But he can call you? Girl, get the fuck off my goddamn phone. Fuck off my phone. Fuck you mean. Hell no. I knew somebody like that before. 
Nice guy, sweet guy, and everything like that. But let me tell you the signs that I knew he was on some fuck shit. Okay? Number one, he would only call, um, like, text me or whatever during the daytime when he was at work. Right? Why can't you text me at 7 o'clock at night when you're at home? Because you got somebody at home with you. I'm not stupid. Okay? You only text during the day at home. Um, when he would call me or FaceTime me or something like that, he would do it when he was out in the car, in the Uber ride going here, coming and going, never while he was sitting at home. His text messages are very sporadic. All that kind of stuff. Girl, girl, we know what that is. We know what that is. I spot that shit within about, we probably was texting for like a week and a half. It wasn't that long. You can spot the patterns real quick. It was no meetup needed. The fuck? No, it's no meetup needed. We're not doing that. Right? It's dumb. It's dumb. Right? And so I said straight up, I was like, I said, you know, I'm starting to think you got somebody. He said, what you talking about? I said, straight up, I only hear from you during the day. And, you know, the phone calls, blah, blah, blah. And I wasn't saying this for him to um, justify to me that I was, that, or to try to make me believe otherwise. I trust my gut. I trust my gut more than I trust your words. Absolutely. I trust my gut more than I trust any man's words. Absolutely. Right? And so, I was just putting him on notice about why I was going to stop talking to him. Because I happen to be talking to him. But you, girl, don't even talk to him about shit. Mm-mm. I'm out. If you go through my phone, the number of people on my phone who are labeled DNA, do not answer. I write your name in as DNA, so I don't even know who you are. Do not answer. That's right, Musa. Trust your guy. I don't know you. I don't know you. I'm sorry. I don't know you. I'm not dealing with you. I don't know what's going on in your world, but I know you're not available to me. So now nah, be done with him, baby. All right, what's my next question? Ooh. What if their truth telling is just hurtful? They're telling you they're not that they're not all in, but expect you to be okay with those emotions. Okay, hold on, baby. So you're dealing with a man, woman, whoever. And they're telling you that they're not all in. They're just not that into you. Right? And they expect you to be okay with it and stick around? Nah, baby. First of all, I appreciate someone's honesty and truth because I think that it's cruel to keep you around if they know they don't want you. And they're not communicating that. But um, it's also cruel to yourself to stay around. Okay? Be done. Be done. If you're not all in, then you're not in at all. Period. Dot. I'm not a fucking car to test drive. If they're not all in, be done. Be done. You know, I'm good. Oh, you're not all in? Oh, you got a lot on your plate right now. You just can't, you don't have the time to commit right now. Job's busy. Yeah. Still getting over that ex from two fucking years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I know. I know it's tough. Wow. Mm. That's me when they're talking. Mm. Mm, yeah, I know. It's gotta be tough. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We're good. You're great. No, I really appreciate you sharing your truth with me. No. As you're calling Uber. Uh huh. Dinner ain't even come out yet, but you're leaving this restaurant. No, it's cool. What am I doing? Ugh, cramps. Uh, uh, got the bubble guts. <laughs> I'm afraid to pass gas. <laughs> It could be a mess. I'm going to head out. Yeah, I'm going to head out. Yeah. No, 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 no. Enjoy. Enjoy. Tell them to cancel mine. Take it. Do what you got to do with it. But I'm going to head out. Thank you for your truth. No, no, we're good. We're good. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Bye. Leave. 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 You see the tattoo say? Put yourself first, baby. I don't stay nowhere I don't want to be. I don't care. We could have planned to spend the whole damn weekend together. We could have flew somewhere together. We planned to spend the whole weekend together. Some bullshit come up. Girl, you better pull out that credit card you don't use and go ahead and book a hotel room at the next hotel over. You better move that plane ticket so you can leave early. Okay, you better figure it out. But you don't sit through no bullshit after somebody tell you some bullshit. The fuck? The fuck? The what and the who? Hell nah. Mm-mm. 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 You just gonna leave? Yeah, well, I told you. The bubble guts. <laughs> it's a mess. And I'm wearing white pants. That'd be horrible. <laughs> Call an Uber. Okay, you know, you just take the food with you. 
Mm-hmm. And then as you're getting in the car, block that fucking number. Bitch, closure is the part of me, but it ain't... Girl, closure... Closure is some bullshit made up by toxic people so they can keep access to you. You didn't hear that part? Closure is some bullshit made up by toxic people so they can keep access to you. You want me to say it again? Okay. Closure is some bullshit made up by toxic people so that they can keep access to you. Because you don't need their closure. Well, don't you think we should talk to your closure so I can explain to you why I feel the way I feel? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I just want to make sure I'm clear because maybe I missed it or whatever. Um, Jim, you don't want me, right? Well, it's not that. I'm just busy in my life right now, and I'm just not able to be all in the way I want to be. But you're great, and you're amazing. And I, I get that. Thank you so much for your honesty. But you being my boyfriend, partner, husband-to-be in this space and time, that's not what you want, right? Let's be specific, Jim. Well, no, not right now. Okay. All I need to hear. That's all I need to hear. You're, no, no, no. You're not a bad person. You're actually an amazing person for telling me it. But, um, yeah. There's nothing to talk about here. I need to hear your what, your why, your life story about what's happening. To be quite honest, I don't need to, you know, be um, rude, but lean in a little closer, Jim. Come on. No, no, lean in close. I don't want to say it too loud for the restaurant. There's kids up in here. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. What? 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 No, I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I just don't have the abundance of fucks to give. You know, 2020 came around. It really depleted my fucks. I'm still kind of operating at a loss here. 2021, wow, wasn't much better. 2022, thought we were going to improve. But yeah, definitely opposite, operating at a, at a fucks deficit. Really, 2023 rolled around. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ran out of fucks there too. So you know, we're heading to 2024 and I just don't have a fuck. I don't have one. I'm telling you, I used to even X one in my bra. Ain't got one there either. I don't even have, I don't have a fuck. So it's not, it's, it's not that I don't give a fuck about you. I just don't have any fucks to give, you know? If, if you didn't want to date me just because you want to go pet your, your rhinoceros every weekend and that's just what you're dedicated to, that's your story. That's your life. I don't have a fuck to give. So I'm, I'm saying that to say that the idea of sitting through a conversation with you for you to explain to me why you don't want me, if, essentially. You try to say it nicely, but you just don't. Um, I would rather sit in a salt and vinegar bath with inflamed hemorrhoids. You get where I'm going with that? Yeah. Yeah. I really would rather do that. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. So that's why we're not having this conversation. Okay? Thanks. The fuck? Closure? Let me tell you I don't want you. Girl, no. Right? I'm all out of fucks. I'm all out of them. I ran out. <laughs> ran out. You see where I'm going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even think of that salt and vinegar analogy even previously. I came that came up with that in the spot. That's talent. That's talent right there. You see? Let me see here. What's my next question? Um, I just dumped a guy. I really like because uh no no I read that one already. Let me go down. I'm sorry. What's the top three red flags in friendships or relationships? Okay. Good question. Top three red flags. Um, I think one of the top red flags is that if you feel that this is someone that you cannot be honest with about your feelings towards them. And by this, you feel that way, not just because you feel that way, because you have a fear of conflict, but because they have shown you. Thank you so much, um, Renaro, for buying me a badge. Um, but because they've shown you you can't be honest with them. This person shuts down, they're defensive, so on and so forth. When, when you're in a relationship with someone who does not have a healthy relationship with accepting responsibility, that's a red flag. Um, another red flag, I would say, is that the, um, your gut tells you something's wrong with this person. Listen to your gut. I have experienced the worst lessons the most painful lessons they weren't worse lessons but the most painful lessons of my life from ignoring my um instincts about people thank you so much tanya atl for giving me a badge um, i appreciate it um yeah yeah for real for real yeah oh my goodness yeah trust your, when your gut tells you something's fucked up here 
listen to it. Don't stick around and see. I wonder what it is. Thank you, Tootsie, for the badge. Don't be sticking around like, oh, I, I wonder what. I wonder what's fucked up about them. Let's stick around and see. Nah, baby, you ain't gotta do that. Um, another red flag. Um, th- th- y'all be ignoring this shit. They have a literal trail of fucked up relationships that follow them around. They don't get along with nobody. And you think you the one person they get along with. You take pride in they get along with me. I know that Tammy is difficult with everybody else. But we get along together. That's my homegirl. No, it's just a matter of time before she's difficult with you. She has conflict with everybody. Got conflict with their coworkers. Conflict with this person. Conflict with that person. Right? Thank you, Jay um, Lux Label Hair, for getting me a badge. Right? People tend to not compartmentalize their behavior. How they treat one person, generally how they treat others. With some subtle nuances. Um, So if this person has issues with managing conflict with other people or just being in healthy long-term relationships and working through shit, you next. Right? What does it mean when you don't believe in your gut feeling? If you don't believe in your instincts, that's, that's, that's normal for people who don't have a lot I don't have a strong relationship with your instincts, you know, but I think that the more that you give yourself the opportunity to listen to your instincts, you will then begin to see proof that they're actually accurate. Only people don't believe in their instincts are people who don't give themselves the opportunity to, to actually do what their instincts are telling them. And therefore, they don't actually see, wow, no, this is actually really accurate. It would be like this. If I told you Go to this particular um, convenience store, right? Let's say you got a convenience store, a bodega, or whatever near you. And I say, when you go there, always buy a lottery ticket there at 11-11. Thank you so much, Library Sunshine, for the badge. At 11-11 on Tuesdays. And I guarantee you, if you buy a lottery ticket, a lottery ticket at 11-11 on Tuesdays, that lottery ticket's going to hit. You say, for real, I'm telling you, right? And then you go do it. You do it one time. You're reluctant, but you do it. And then, bam, the lottery ticket hits. Oh, shit. He was right. And you go back there again. Um, It's 11-11. I want to buy another ticket. You're going to go there over and 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 over again because you have found a source that gives you the abundance that you need. It's the same with your instincts. You can go to them at any point in time, and they will always give you what you need. You have to just be willing to go to them. It's that simple. It is that simple. We fail ourselves when we don't go to our instincts. So if you find that you have a a struggle with listening to your instincts, listening to your gut, that just means you need to start doing it more often so you can see that it's actually accurate. Trust me, it's accurate. Now, one of the questions that I often get is, How do you tell the difference between your instincts and your trauma? Your instincts and your triggers. So your instincts and your emotions. Well, let's talk about that. I believe your instincts are usually very, very accurate. They're usually very, very accurate. But I do think that sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference between the two of them if you don't have a strong relationship with your instincts or a strong relationship with knowing your triggers. So that's the answer I give to you is this is a great time to be honest with yourself about what are your actual triggers, right? So you can know, oh, that's just my trigger. Because a lot of times we get triggered, but we don't know what's triggering us. A lot of times we get triggered, but we don't know what's triggering us. See, I need you to, you washing dishes right now and you not listening to me, so I'm going to say it one more time just so you can really hear it. I understand, baby. A lot of the times... We get triggered, but we don't actually know what's triggering us. We just know the byproduct of it. We're like, oh my God, now I'm amped up. Now my heart's beating. My palms are sweaty. I'm ready to cuss somebody out. I'm ready to retreat and and go into my room and not talk to anybody, whatever it may be. You need to have a better relationship with understanding what your triggers actually are. So you can then tell the difference between, is this my instinct speaking or is it my trigger speaking? Right? Takes time, baby. But one way or the other, you need to start listening to your instincts. Okay? I love you too, darling. I love you too. Um, Let me see here. All right. My next question. Um, Oh, wow. I stopped talking to a dear friend of mine. 40 years of friendship. 
The energy was negative and toxic at times. It's been three months. Now I miss her and I want to be friends again. Is it worth it or should I let it be? She's negative and petty at times. If I don't call, she won't call. I was just over it. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm clapping for you. I'm clapping for you, baby. First of all, congratulations for taking a step that so many people don't take, which is moving out of a relationship because it's not serving you and because it's unhealthy. Saying, I don't care what the history is. I don't care what the timeline is. This relationship is not a relationship that I want in my future. Put some hand claps on the screen for her. Great job. Now, what we have to understand is just because you miss someone does not mean you should go back to them. When you have a breakup with somebody, don't you miss them too? But why would you go back? Going back to somebody, my grandmother always uses this analogy. She says, when you go back to somebody, it's like when you have a wound that's healing. You know what I'm saying? You know how when you have a wound that's healing and it like, I just got a tattoo, right? And they say it's going to start to, um, what do you call it? Like, it's going to start to... Um, like, shit, the skin's going to start coming off a little bit. But they said, don't scratch it. Don't scratch it. Just let it come off. Because if you scratch it, it can make it worse and you get an infection. It's the same thing when it comes to going back to somebody who you left for good reason. If they haven't changed and they haven't come to you with that change and shown you a very clear change, you can't do that. Because if you peel the scab, if you start scratching at it, you're going to get infected. And sometimes what that means is that the relationship you go back to could be even worse. Because now you're going back to dealing with somebody who A, resents you for leaving them in the first place, and B, probably has no self-awareness to truly understand or accept why you left them in the first place. So now you're going to deal with all of that. You left for good reason. Of course you missed them. 40 years of friendship? Y'all have so, many, so much history. Y'all got so many rituals. Y'all got so many inside jokes. Of course you missed them. But remember why you left in the first place. Remember why you left in the first place. This is the same for every breakup. One of the things I talk about doing is you pull out your phone and what you do is you go into your phone on your voice recorder and you record in your voice recorder the reasons why the relationship was unhealthy. Don't talk about the good times because if the good times are so good, you still be there. But what you want to do is record into the phone the reasons why the relationship was unhealthy. Be open and honest with yourself about it. No one else has to hear it but you. And then what you do is every time you feel tempted to call them, to text them, to whatever, listen to it. Listen to it. Listen to it. Just remind yourself. Even if they reach out to you, hey girl, you still not talking to me? Because that's what they probably want to do. Thank you, Kirby. Right? Then you can play it back before you get sucked in. Because people always want to be nice. Hey, I missed you. You still not talking to me? Girl, we got 40 years. You just gonna let it fall away? Oh my God, didn't that pull out your heartstrings? Didn't that pull out your, heart, your heartstrings? This stupid bitch. I said, you know, sometimes you gotta be just let your full flows out. She is narcissistic. She's negative. She's petty. She's vindictive. She's blah, 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 blah. I remember that time when she did X, Y, Z to me. I remember that time when she did X, Y, Z to the other person. Get it all out there so you can remind yourself. And then you can just say, in love, in love and in truth, it is so good to hear from you. I hope you're doing well. God bless you. Or say nothing at all. It works so well. It works so well. All right? It works so well. All right? Everything. Don't send that voice note to her. Honey, K says, send that voice note to her. Don't do that shit. That's messy as fuck. Don't do that. Y'all so messy. Okay. Uh-huh. How can I tell if his silent treatment is to hurt or punish me versus him having poor emotional intelligence and communication skills? Okay, so let me share this with you, okay? Yes, we do have some people who are sadistic. We do have some people who have one of the cluster B personality disorders, such as narcissism is the star of the show, but we do have, you know, people with borderline personality disorder as well. Um, you have people with these personality disorders who, oof, you know, they can be quite sadistic. They um, create conflict. They will give you the silent treatment as a way to hurt you. Yes, those people exist. Um, 
I think that the key is this. Remember, not everyone is doing it for that reason. Some people do it and they're aware that it hurts you, but they don't know how to do anything different. And some people do it because to hurt you. Um, what I would say is this. What you want to focus less on is why they're doing it and focus more on how does it make you feel. Is this a relationship? Do you feel healthy in this relationship? Do you feel like you can have a progressive, um, healthy relationship with this person who gives you the silent treatment, independent of why they do it? I would focus on that first. The next thing I would do is I would go to them and I would let them know how it makes me feel. And I would invite them to share with me, like we talked about earlier, I would invite, with them, invite them to share with me, you know, what they feel that I could do to help them, you know, to open up more. Again, it's not your fault or your responsibility. You're just opening the door. And then, like I said, at a later point in time, maybe a day or so later, you share with them about how it makes you feel and what you need from them. Right? Give them the opportunity. Give them the opportunity to then share with you. Um, give them the opportunity to then um, share an experience with you of them changing. I don't care why you do it. I just get you willing to take responsibility and change it. And if they're not willing to take responsibility and change it, regardless of if they're doing it on purpose or doing it passively, this relationship may not be the best one for you. Right? That's what it comes down to. You know? Now, I will say this. If it is very clear that this person is doing this to hurt you, because some people are like that. They use the silent treatment to try to punish you. I'm not saying, I'm just not going to talk about it. I know it hurts you that we're not talking about. Oh my God, that hurts so bad. <laughs> I know it hurts you that we're not talking about it. Let me rinse off my wrist. Hold on, y'all. I got to rinse my wrist off. I know it hurts you that we're not talking about it. I know it bothers you. Um, but I'm just not going to talk about it. I'm going to give you the silent treatment because I can give it to you. I don't have to do anything. Well, I got this soap here that they gave me. It's called Pure Soap. Okay. Hold on, I gotta go out here. The Wi-Fi in here. I said these good, strong South African buildings, right? I just wanna wash my hands real fast. Okay, this is the soap that they told me to use. It's called Pure Soap. So what you gotta do is this. You gotta wash it like this. I've been washing it like about three times a day and I put like a really clean lotion on it like Eucerin. Oh my gosh. Just to keep it clean. I'm not a medical provider, so if what I'm telling you does not reconcile with what you've been told by your medical provider, then please don't do it. Please consult with your medical provider and only do what they've instructed you to do. <sighs> Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Let me put this away. Hold on. I'll get back to you in a minute. I'm trying to wash this soap off my hand. Well, let me take this lotion out of here. Let me take this out here too. Okay. Thank you, Life Lover 63, for buying me a badge. I appreciate it. All right, let me put this right here. Hmm. Why did I gotta? Um, you said Aquaphor for my tat. I couldn't find Aquaphor, but he said that the Eucerin would be fine too because he said it had no scent in it. You don't think that'll be good? I will. I will I'll look for it. Um, he says I deserve better and broke up with me, so I moved out. How do I move on with dignity by never calling them again? Because he was right. You do deserve better. We think that shit's an insult, but it's the truth. If somebody can utter out their mouth, you deserve better, it's because it's the truth. Thank you, I am Mia Hatton for on um, the badge. Yeah. Hell yeah. You said use is good too? Okay, cool. Yeah, they said something with no sense. You know, I have dermatitis, so I have to use use Um... I never used Aquaphor before that I'm aware of. Um, so, yeah. Let me see here. Oh, it's the same company as Aquaphor? I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, it hasn't. 
No fragrance whatsoever in this. Um, but yeah, that's my font. Who said they like my font? That's the font. I wish I could show you how it looked more easily. Let me see if I, I'll twist around this way so you can see how it looks. That's how it looks. It's so weird. Okay, I'm trying to turn it this way. It says, every time I twist it, it makes it look like it's like, it makes it look distorted. It's actually, when I look at it, it looks straight, but when I twist it around, it looks distorted. It's not distorted, but it's just, you know, you're twisting your skin around. But anyway, that's how it looks. I want it to look like, I told him, I said, pick a font that's like very legalistic, that looks like, like a law. You know what I mean? So like Times New Roman. I think that's Times New Roman. Um... So, yeah, if you tell someone how you feel and they get mad at you, what does that mean? So you tell them how you feel and they get mad at you. Um, that could mean the person just is not in an emotional state to um, take responsibility. Someone says my voice is deep. It's because I'm getting over. I don't want to say it cold, but it was a little bit. Thank you, Derek. Derek accompanied me to get my tattoo. He got his too right there. Flower boy. That was my friend who I took the picture with. Um... Oh, thank you for giving me a badge, Cynthia Thomas. I didn't see it. So when you all buy a badge, it pops up like a message and it goes by really fast. So if I'm like washing my hands and doing something, I don't even see the message. So thank you for letting me know about that. And I appreciate the badge as well. Um, let me see. What's my next question here? Okay. I'm reading what Dion Imani says. She says, yes, Userin is dope to use. Aquaphor is more petroleum layer. Um, either way, you're good. Okay, that makes sense. Um, you say, how do I deal with my mother who puts my bro down so much and calls him selfish for divorcing his wife? They have kids. My mother has gone to depression. About your brother divorcing his wife? Your mother needs to get a life. How do you deal with her? Uh, set a boundary and, don't, and, and, and recognize that how she's treating him, you can get treated that same way eventually. Don't include her in your personal choices. Unfortunately, your brother is the... Um, is the is the example right now? Thank you, Skin Tea Hunty. Skin Tea Honey, I, I just I, I just got it. Skin Tea Honey for buying me a badge. Um, yeah, unfortunately, your mother has poor boundaries. She's putting him down, calling him selfish. That's what's, first of all. That's between your brother and, and her. I would not intercede because y your brother clearly is not ready to set some boundaries with her. And what you don't want to do is intercede and go to him, and be like, "Hey, set some boundaries with her. Stop letting her talk to you like that." And then because he has poor boundaries, he then goes to her and say, hey, you know, mom, guess what so-and-so said? You know, that's you, that's you, that. And now they team up against you because you were trying to help him. That's on him right now. You get to be in the, in the, in the, in the audience of this experience to see that, she, that, that she's not someone who's able to operate with the level of maturity to have access to your life like that. So when you decide to get in a relationship or leave a relationship, she should be the last person to find out. Thank you, Nadine um, LCSW19 for buying me a badge. She should be the last person to find out about it. And she's like, why don't you tell me about what's going on in your life? Oh, I'm just, you know, it's just whatever. I don't even think about it. She's showing you that she's not mature enough to be able to support her children in their personal choices. She's shaming him for getting a divorce. No. Hell no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Pay attention and move accordingly. You don't have to talk to her about it. You certainly don't have to vilify her for it. But you do need to move accordingly. For sure. Um, let me see here. Yeah, you got to put the question in the box, baby, because I may not see it. Thank you, Drive With Purpose. I'm going to try to scroll up and see if I see your question. I usually don't see it unless y'all put it in the box. You say, how do you deal with a man who's emotionally unstable, but you want him to be stable? You want to support his needs emotionally. Well, first of all, we need to figure out, is this a mental health issue? Right? And it's not your job to figure it out. So let me actually take a step back. First of all, you need to recognize his emotional stability has nothing to do with you and you can't control that. Thank you from Georgia Peach um, to Florida Sunshine for buying me a badge. You have no control over his emotional stability. That's number one. Um, if you're married to him, have children with him, you have some form of commitment to him where you really want to try, he's getting to therapy. Because that lack of emotional stability could be a mental health condition. He could um, have anxiety, depression. He could be bipolar. There could be a number of different things going on there. So you could try to help, 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 help. But ultimately, he may need, some, he may need someone else to intercede to help him. Hey, Alex. 
You see? So, um, yeah, that's number one right there is that you got to deal with it that way. Second of all, I've learned this from my own life, dealing with people who just seem to not have emotional stability. I can stick with my level of commitment to you is based on your level of commitment to yourself. So if you're committed to yourself enough to get to therapy or, you know, if they put you on a treatment plan to stick with your treatment plan or whatever it may be, right, then I'm committed to you. But if you have low commitment to your emotional stability, then I cannot be committed to you. Why? Because I'm not going to expose myself to all the bullshit that comes with up today, down tomorrow, up today, down tomorrow, up today, down tomorrow. I'm not dealing with that. Even if you are, even if you do have a mental health condition. Okay, I get you didn't choose that, but you can choose to stick with the treatment plan. And if you choose not to stick with the treatment plan, in spite of the fact that it affects your relationships negatively, in spite of the fact that it hurts people around you, in spite of the fact that it hurts you, the fuck would I stick around for that shit for? I can love you from over here. I'm not dealing with that shit. Hell no. So I think that's what it comes down to. Empower them. Say, hey, babe, I'm experiencing this from you. This is what I've observed from you. You know, do you observe that within yourself? How does that feel for you? Yeah, I can imagine it doesn't feel good to be up and down. I can imagine. Don't vilify them, but I can imagine. Baby, I really want to see you be in a stable place. I know that above all, it hurts you. So what would it look like for you to perhaps maybe consider starting some therapy? Yeah, this month. Yeah. Yeah, because I can't imagine how that feels. I don't want to do therapy. Oh. I accept that. I do have to share with you, however, that... um, it's very challenging for me sometimes, you know, knowing how to navigate when your moods are in different places. And for me, I have to be honest with you, sometimes it does push me away. And I know that's not your intention, but I don't know how to deal with it. So it would really mean the world to me if you would at least talk to somebody, you know, because maybe that could give you some tools to consider using. That way you can experience just the joy of stability. Okay. And see how it goes. Right? I'm going to tell you this right now. I can't deal with no man who won't do therapy. I never get in a relationship with no man who won't do therapy. The fuck? Now, I mean, you got to be actually in therapy today, but you are not open to therapy ever? Never? Get the fuck out of my face. Because at some point in time, we're going to go through some shit or you're going to go through some shit where you may need some therapy. Right? You And so, and you tell me, I ain't doing that. Bye. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, hell no. You understand how that's a waste of your time? Mm-mm. Exactly. Exactly. They think they always right. <clears throat> I can't deal with somebody who thinks they always right either. Hell no. Mm-mm. I need to drink something. Something like some water or something. I'm going through these questions here. Hold on. I've been talking to this guy. He's in Africa and I'm in the U.S. He's willing to move here. Do you think long distance can work? You're talking to a guy. He's in Africa and you're in the U.S. He's willing to move. And you're asking me, do I think that long distance can work? So basically in the meantime, before he moves. If there is a clear imminent plan and there's a clear visitation schedule in the meantime while y'all are working towards that plan. I think nowadays with people's ability to do remote work long distance don't have to be long distance. It may be that, hey, you know, once a month I'll come out to you. I know the plan is for you to move out here next year or a year from now, whatever it may be. But, you know, one one week a month, I, I go out to you one week and I work from there. The next month you come out here and you work from here. Y'all got to have a plan to spend some real good time together. It can't just be phone calls and text messages. Why? Because I feel like you don't truly know somebody to spend meaningful time with them. And please, before that man move all the way to another country, please find a way for y'all to spend an extended amount of time living under the same roof first. Even if it's just an extended, extended, extended visit. Now, no vacation shit. Y'all not going to do this shit in the Dominican Republic. Y'all need to do it at one of y'all's houses. Okay? Y'all need to experience living together. I, I really do believe that. I really do believe that. All right? This is not the days of your grandmother 
It was like, oh, well, we don't have to live together. When we live together, we're going to figure out how to make it work. Because if you want to make it work, you're going to make it work. Your grandmother had to make it work. Because she either could not find employment at that point in time in her life. Or the economic opportunities for women was so just deplorable that she had to pick a man who she thought she could have a future with and make it work. It wasn't her devotion to him or her devotion to God that made her make it work. These young people just give up so easily. My grandmama was with my granddaddy for 50 years and they made it work. Well, think about the time that they came out of. We have have options. We can cohabitate together without social stigma in our communities looking down on us. Mm -hmm. We have the economic ability where I can have my household and you have your household. We can spend time together and spend some time apart while we're getting to know each other. So let's acknowledge that we we have those things and utilize that. Utilize that so you're not putting yourself in a position, uh, a negative position. You know? Let me see here. Um, what? Is it okay to be engaged um, to marry someone who drinks and smokes and you're having feelings that he cheats? Why don't you say trust your instincts? Because you're not just having feelings that he cheats. You probably know he's cheating. And because he drinks and smokes, because you put that in there for a reason. Because if you were only worried about him cheating, you would have mentioned that. But you put the drinking and the smoking in there. Because what you're trying to let me know is that, yes, you have feelings that he's cheating. But you also recognize that his habits also may also affect his judgment. I would never trust somebody who's an addict or a drinker or anything like that who also has issues with fidelity. You know what they do. Because a sober person can cheat on you every day. So what do you think somebody who's drinking or smoking can do? Yeah. Don't marry him. Not anytime soon. That's my opinion. Do what you do. I wouldn't marry him. Let me say that. I wouldn't marry him. Why would I legally tie myself to somebody who's Habits don't align with mine. And whose character doesn't align with mine. You think marriage going to change them? What, you think popping a baby out going to change them? Because y'all love to do that. No shade, I'm just saying. You know? You know what I'm saying? That you pop a baby out and bam. Hey, Shannon. You pop a baby out and then bam. He, um, he going somehow or another stop cheating? I found that men tend to get worse once you had a baby. You think that having that baby um, is going to um, make him um, change? Chill. Chill. Okay. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's probably not the case. And um, yeah, you should keep that in mind. So, I'm sorry, I'm just putting this on my phone. But you got the point. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're not ready to tell him that you're not ready to marry him, because you're probably not. That's why you asked me for confirmation. Um, You don't have to articulate it. Push the date back. That's the easiest way to get out of a marriage. Uh, Like an engagement or whatever. Push the wedding date back. You know, push it back. Find a reason to push it back. Mm Mm-hmm. You can be direct one if you're ready. Or just find a reason to push the wedding date back. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Start building your plan for how y'all gonna move apart if y'all already live together. Start thinking about that. Where could you move? Start looking up apartment listings, house listings. If he lived with you, start thinking about how you can get him out your house. MJ, how do I stop myself from contacting him? Block his number? You have to delete the contact out your phone. And delete the text message thread. Y'all think you slick, you delete the number, but still got the text message there, so you know where to go out to. Go back to delete it. When you're ready to be done, you're done. If you ready, if you really ready to be done with somebody, it ain't that deep. You go right here to this phone, you find their uh text message thread, delete it, find their phone number, block it first. 
then delete it. That way they can't get in contact with you. You go to your inbox and your email, you find all the emails they sent you, you delete them. You go to your deleted folder, you delete those. You also block their email address so they can't reach out to you. You go to social media and you look up their pages, you block, block, block all their pages. You shut down all options for them to, for you to be able to contact them. I've done it before. You can get you can do all that in about a minute and a half. Block and delete equals peace, baby. Okay. The question is not how do you stop contacting him. The question is are you ready to stop? I know me. When I'm ready to be done, I'm done. You can cut somebody off that easily. It's not that I cut them off that easily. It's that I went through the pain of trying to make it work for so long that now I have no more energy to do anything else but cut them off. Right? You know what I'm saying? Cut them off. If he show up outside your house, well, baby, you got law enforcement, depending on what country you're in and depending on what rights you have available to you. You have different abilities and different rights that allow you to protect your home. Check your local laws and make sure you're adhering to those. Let me tell you about me, baby. I'm a Texan. I believe in my home being protected. Come by if you want to. Come by if you want to. Okay. 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 I don't react well when I feel threatened. Okay. Okay. We got it, girls. All right. Okay, don't let the glitter go fool you, baby, all right? Check my credentials, all right? You welcome, Mahogany. Mahogany and Ma. She says, I love you, Uncle MJ. Thank you for pouring into us. Uh-huh. You want a story time, Teacup So Sexy? Yeah, baby, I can't do a story time right now. I ain't got a story in my heart, but I'm going to give you one soon. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm dead serious, Golden Goddess. I'm serious about that. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I don't play no games. I don't play no games. I don't play no games, okay? I do Muay Thai. Y'all know Muay Thai. That's like kickboxing, for lack of better terms. Um, I believe in um, exercising all of my constitutional rights that allow me to protect my home when I'm in a jurisdiction that allows me to, to exercise those constitutional rights. Okay? All right, you got it. You got it? You understood. Okay. I don't play no games. All right? All right? Let's not play. Not today. Not today. Fuck around and find out. All right, what's my next question? Let me see here. You said, how do I deal with a mother who was never there in my childhood but wants to be so entitled to my success as an adult? So much entitlement just because she birthed me? My mom feels entitled to my lot now but she has never been there as a child how do i deal with her okay okay i'm reading this right now okay i I hear that a lot from a lot of people mothers fathers even siblings right um well let's start here no one is entitled to you that's why eyes of blue 73 if i run find out but no one is entitled to shit that you created Shit that you work for, shit that's in your life. No one is entitled to it but you. So what they need is strong boundaries. They can expect what they want, but that don't mean you got to give in. Right? So strong boundaries. And you can, I want to be very clear with this. Strong boundaries does not mean ending relationships. Strong boundaries does not mean you dislike the person. Strong boundaries don't even have to be conflict or, or don't even have to be aggressive in how you put them out there but they do need to be um very strongly enforced so a strong boundary is this is for example if she reaches out to you or when she reaches out to you to ask for something say no girl you know because you you know i did this for you 
I really can't afford to do that. Just say no. And number two, stop telling them what you got. They don't need to know every accomplishment. Because see, you're telling them your accomplishments is a way of celebrating. But what they're doing is they sitting up here counting your dollars, counting your pockets. When they hear your accomplishments. You did what? Oh, for real? Good for you, girl. And then magically, a week later, a month later, they got a request. And you don't see the connection between their requests always following your accomplishments? Stop telling them shit. Now they're going to be like, girl, why did you tell me you had a new job? You've been at a new job for six months? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Girl, it, was just, it was just a quick little job. You ain't tell me that. Why ain't you tell me that? I wouldn't even think about it. Mm-hmm. They pay you more money. How much they pay? Barely nothing. I'm just hitting my bills the, hitting my bills the best I can. Huh. I'm doing the best I can in this economy. In this economy. Don't tell them your business. You say, you say, MJ ain't got a lot. I'm really broke. Well, then tell them you're really broke if that's the truth. Shit. You know? Exactly. Monitor the pockets. No. Mm-mm. Just a little quick little something. A little job I got. Uh-huh. They not entitled to your business. Learn how to separate yourself from people. You ain't got to see them every day. You ain't got to call them every day. You ain't got to do all that shit. If you know that she has poor boundaries and has entitlement issues, why give her access to you consistently? Worst thing you can do ever. Worst thing you can ever do. Stop giving her access to you. Don't do that. Mm -mm. Let me see here. What factors go into play when deciding who should relocate in a relationship? Should the woman always move? Not necessarily. I don't think it should have to do anything with gender. I think it has to do with income and access to opportunity. For example, if one person works in a field, let's say one person is a, um, I don't know, they own a restaurant. A business where they have to go into it. Like literally, you can't phone in that job. But the other person works in compliance or something like that. Well, I feel like the person whose career prospects allow them to be more flexible, maybe the person who should probably be a little bit more amenable to moving, at least initially. Now, that doesn't mean you got to stay there, but at least initially. Um, another thing, who's got more money? I think also the fact that, to be quite honest, male or female, if somebody is much more financially stable based on the life they created there, they should not be moving. Let's not rock the money boat. Okay, you move, right? It just is what it is. Um, I think kids come to play too because, like, who was I talking to the other day? Somebody told me that they wanted to move to be with somebody, but they have children that they co parent with somebody else. And even though it's a good co parenting relationship, the other parent wants to see the kids, so they can't move clear across the country or halfway around the world. How the parents, how are you going to see the kids? So, from that perspective, the other partner who doesn't have children. I think should probably be a little more open to the idea of moving. You see what I'm saying? That's what I think. You know? Anyway, y'all, I'm tired. I gotta go. Y'all see my tattoo? I keep forgetting I have a tattoo. Like, when I just did that, I twisted my arm. I was like, oh, shit, I do have a tattoo. Um, but anyway, um, this is wonderful. Go to YouTube. I will post it over there. I love y'all. Listen to everything I said. Hopefully it helped you. And thank you for all the badges. You all have been wonderful. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.